Welcome friends, this is Slaps 360, episode number 10. I'm Nate. I'm Donnie. We are your number one paranormal web show. <laughs> and uh, Slaps 360 is about uh, where we talk about everything paranormal and beyond, um, but we definitely want your feedback and if you have any questions or concerns or any ideas what we can talk about next, just give us a call, 315-600-8077. Um, lines are open now, so... Uh, whenever you you want to give us any kind of input, give us a call, text us. Yep, we we'll can get it. We can take them all through the show. We should be able to watch them. Just go ahead, and uh, we can also take them on Facebook uh, and also in the chat room. Yep. Um, also, if you're if you're watching us on Slaps360.com, you'll look down there. There's the number. Um, it should be right around in this area, right there. Yeah, down there, um, and also below. I uh, just want to reiterate the Sisson Mansion raffle, uh, the ghost hunt. If uh, you're unable to see, find anyone with tickets, down below here, well, down below if you're on there on the website slaps360.com, you'll see a donation button for the Sisson Mansion. If you <coughs> sign into that, you can go ahead and uh, put your money in for the raffle, and we'll send you the tickets. So that's and a hundred percent proceeds go right back to the Humane Society. That's correct, Potsdam so, Animal Shelter. Yep. Well, wow. uh, we got a great show tonight. Yep. Um, we're going to be packed. We've got Katie, Katie, Katie Boyd. Boyd is going to be giving us a call. She's a demonologist. Uh, I know we've had some questions in the past about uh, demonology, and and we have questions ourselves with it. So I'm um, really excited about that. But uh, before we get to that, we had a a very busy busy weekend. Yeah, we uh, we headed out to Plattsburgh, New York, for the Paranormal Expo held by uh, the Nipers, mm -hmm. uh, Northern New York Paranormal. Research Society, I think so. I, I always he's forget messed up ours I, up a couple. I times. always forget the last. Yeah, I'm pretty I, sure that's what it is. But uh, yeah, um, Merrill's group, Merrill McKee, Merrill McKee. McKee, yep. McKee yep. Um, we like to thank him definitely for having us out. Uh, it was a great event as usual. Yeah, we we sold uh sold a ton of shirts. Ton of shirts. Uh, Saw our number one fan, Brittany. Oh yeah. <laughs> Shout out. Represent. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a good time, and we've actually one of the cooler things of the whole day was that we met. Uh, what two or three other paranormal? Groups. Yeah, some like kind of in the in the New York area. Some more groups that you know, you know, just uh, branching out and right. And I tell you what, it um, you know the coin, the thing you coined there, the pair unity. Pair unity. Um, these guys were absolutely um, they were professional. They came up to us. We went up to them, and you know, we're, we're actually we're going to be working with a couple of them here uh, very shortly. Actually, so. uh, one was uh, Neps. Neps Northeast, Northeast Paranormal Society. Um, based out of Albany, and uh, another of the groups was um, I, th um, I think it was Lake County uh, Paranormal Society. Uh, it was Scott Dow. Uh, yeah. I'd like to do a shout out for Scott. He he uh, he just started up not too long ago, uh, and he's looking for help. So uh, if you know if you search him out, look look him up on Facebook. I think he's added us friends. He's looking for help, and he's out in the Plattsburgh area. I think. Yes. Yep. Um, and also North Country Paranormal Research. I think so. Hi, yeah. We apologize if you, you know, <laughs> we have a, the business cards, but they're not with us. Obviously, it's a lot of acronyms. Um, okay, <laughs> they are a, a group out of uh, Plattsburgh. Um, some nice young guys. They just um, they just started up. Also, they, yeah, they just started up, and um, they've. I don't. They seem like they've got actually the North Country PRS or NC PRS. That's yeah. I did write it down. Mm -hmm. See, so iPad. So there's a lot. There's a lot of groups out there, guys. There's uh, that not just St. Lawrence County. So. Uh, if there's something we can do, give us a shout, and we can, you know, help you out if you're in another county or something like that. Well, the chat room is a buzzing. That's awesome. We'd like to see everyone. I'm gonna do a shout out to everyone. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, y'all. Look at that. Even even the old timers out. Randy. Oh yeah, Randy. <laughs> Jeez. Past your bedtime and everything. Good night, sunshine. Um, we also, during the expo, uh, Brad Roussel from Roussel Films, mm -hmm. he released his um, his paranormal documentary, what was it called, called? Between Two Worlds. Between Two Worlds, that's right. He's, um, uh, it's, uh, we actually showed it last week, uh, one of the clips, but he's actually got a, um, some more extended clips. If, if you go to Brad's Facebook, uh, Brad Roussel at, at Facebook, I can't give you the link for it right now because I don't know what it is to be honest. Yeah, it's, but, it's um, on ours. You know. Yeah, just you can actually you can see it right on ours. But um, definitely check it out. I definitely recommend it to everybody to uh, go out and get a copy. 
Um, if for nothing else, Slaps is on there. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, but I mean, it's got some great, it talks about one of the investigations that we're going to start talking about probably in the next couple weeks. Um, the one we had in Chattagay, the one we talk a lot about. But that one there um, is on there. And just, just some different things, you know, about paranormal happenings in Franklin County. So, definitely check it out. So, uh, $20 a copy. 20 bucks, yep. Plus and, uh, tax. So they're going fast. They are. Yeah, they are. So. so, and if anybody wants one, they can actually uh, message us here tonight, uh, text us. We, we'll get you a copy and we can send it out to you. So, and uh, again, the number is 315-600-8077. So, definitely uh, take a look at it. Yeah. Um, so, our first guest tonight is going to be Katie Boyd. Mm -hmm. She's a demonologist <clears throat> from New Hampshire area. Um, and definitely recommend anybody if they have questions for Katie, um, just even throw it in the chat. We'll try to get to them if we can. Uh, but I know we ourselves have a ton of questions for her, so um, and I'm sure everybody else does too. So whatever you got, let us know. We'll definitely uh, get them to her. Yep, she's um, she's an author. Uh, she's written many books actually. Um, we're going to uh, we're going to delve into some things that we are not really familiar with. So a lot of this is going to be a learning process for us mm -hmm. while we interview her. Um, it's always a learning process in front of this camera. <laughs> True. But, uh, <laughs> um, just to be sure, I did turn the sound on. Yep, yeah, okay. <laughs> See? I always so far, check. so good. I always got to check. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so uh, actually, why don't you go into a little bit about the thing that you uh, experienced or the phone call? You want to go into that, maybe? The one about the... Yeah. Yeah. One okay. of the things you're gonna ask. Right. Well, um, one of the things I'm gonna ask Katie about, and I kind of touched on it last week. Um, I got a call, a couple, I think it's a couple weeks now, uh, from from a lady of a friend who was telling me about how for 30 years this this poor lady has been um, hounded by you know par some demons. Um, well, she thinks is demons. It's something definitely paranormal, but nothing that we're used to doing. Um, talk about scratches, uh, seeing the shadows imprints on her bed all the way from her actually everybody else in her family um, being affected by this um, so-called demon that's you know they're not even in the house you know they, they can live miles away and they still are getting you know uh, paranormal activity I guess and I mean it's, it's been hurting them it's not just the the bump in the night it scratches um, some of them death actually and it's uh, it's been 30 years and she's finally now branching out because she doesn't know if she can take it anymore that's, um, that's it, it's be almost like. like a hex, you know, in the family type thing. And she wants to know, you know, what what can be done about it. And when we were contacted, I, you know, I was up front with her and saying that's something that we haven't dealt with before. But we will definitely see what we can do for you because we're not just going to let her, you know, let her out in the cold like that. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, I, we're not just going to go in there and say, yeah, you know, we're going to document it for you and try to get famous off seeing a demon or something like that because. <laughs> You know, you don't know what you're messing with there. So that's something that we're going to talk to Katie about. Um, it's definitely um, some crazy claims there, and she's been doing it for over 20 years. That's got to be scary. I yeah. mean, that's really got to be scary. I couldn't imagine. I mean, it's literally experiencing something that you've watched in a horror film. Yeah, and exactly. I, I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even know how to, you know, handle it. Mm-hmm. I, I. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. I mean, just just the claim of like, you know, even seeing a ghost at the end of my bed. You know, not not, not going to hurt me. Just going to be there for three seconds. I I, I wouldn't know what to do then. But uh, to take and have it something to follow you for thirty years that just get progressively worse. That yeah. Um, that's thirty. That's a long time. Yeah. I mean, that's how old we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like living with it since you were like three. You know. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> how old did they say they were? D I didn't. I don't know. No. I I didn't know. I don't know. But hmm. I think, uh, well, her kids were at, at least teenagers, so, so probably in their 50s, 60s anyways. Interesting. I wonder, did they say anything about any trauma or anything? Just, like, anything that they have dealt with other than relating it to demons or no? Well, th they say that all the trauma in their life was due to the demons. Just be, I mean, yeah. that's what I was wondering. But nothing like, they didn't say anything of any kind of substantial you know, death in the family. Or right, were, or, you know, sexual abuse yeah. or, you know, physical abuse. That's, you know, I don't know, that's scary. It's right. still scary. Um, so she's going to call here in a second. Um, like I said, she's a uh, published author, you know, well over, I think, four or five times. Uh, she has a book called Devils and Demons in the 21st Century. 
haunted closets, uh, witches and witchcraft in the 21st century, um, and also I think a couple more uh, that I don't have in, on, on Well, the I file. know she does have one radio thing called uh, oh, yeah, Ghost, right. Ghost Quest. That's right. Ghost Quest, I think. Ghost yep. Quest Radio. It's actually on the same night tonight. Uh, it's uh, Monday night right. uh, at uh, 5, I believe. Mm -hmm. But we'll ask her uh, when she calls in. She'll be calling in here in a second. Yep. So, so as soon as we... I got the nice <coughs> new iPad that I tell everyone. Hmm. It's, it's awesome. Uh, well, in case you haven't noticed, Rick's not here tonight. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Rick had to. Um, well, we had to figure out what Rick had to do. Yeah. What What is Rick doing? Let's see. What hmm. did Rick do? Um. Oh, maybe uh, he ate too many burritos, and now he's in the toilet upstairs that, right now. Yep. Yep. Actually, yeah, he's actually in the house. He's just not with us right now because he uh, Taco Bell was bad to Rick. <laughs> but uh, I guarantee he'll be back next week. Yep. Yep. And oh, and another thing too. Um, uh, before I forget. Uh, Terra Mansion in Messina is now open. They're uh, open on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, I believe, I, I'm not going to try, I think 5 to 9 or 5 to 10, something like that. I know I'm getting the times wrong. But they are open again, but they're not the haunted store. The store isn't open. Just the haunted house. Just the haunted and we are going to try and get down there next week or sometime this week, do a little interview with them. Um, so I definitely tell everybody to support them. You know, they've, it's been, been around for over 10 years now. And they need the support of the community because the community needs something like this. Where is it again? It's over uh, across the tracks on 420 on the left. Oh, so side. it's right there. It's, still. A, it's the big it's warehouse. The big warehouse. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they still held. Uh, yeah, it's the right gym. there. So I definitely uh, have everybody check it out. Well, th that's a good place for it because that place looks creepy. It does look creepy. Yeah. You know, I, you know how you make it better? Don't do anything to it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no paint what, job. What's the best way? <laughs> what's the best way? <laughs> Let it fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, on the line with us right now is Katie Boyd. How you doing, Katie? Hey, how you doing? Good. I'm glad to, uh, glad that you call in. We really appreciate it. Uh, well, thanks for having me, guys. Our so. pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Katie, um, could you just give uh, the viewers and us uh, just a little brief history of how you got going um, being a demonologist? Sure. Uh, actually, I was raised in a severe haunted house, and... From the time I was about four or five years old, all the way up to the time I was 19, uh, we used to have, my family used to have a local local priest literally come into our house and bless the inside and the outside of our home. And the activity used to be okay, you know, kind of subside for like a week or so, and then it would stir up again. Um, and it just continued like this, uh, you know, so I, I literally moved out when I was 19. Now, I started going down to my local library when I was pretty young to try to figure out, you know, what's going on in this house. And, you know, of course, you know, way back in the 70s, some of the, some of the books were, you know, all about alchemy. Um, not a lot of paranormal books back then. A lot of it was, you know, different um, religious, religious books. Uh, different types of occultism type of books. So I kind of had my um, foundation built as an occult <coughs> sciences expert, uh, you know, from that point on. And then, uh, you know, as I did get older and I moved out, I literally had teachers, um, you know, occult teachers that literally, you know, taught me my foundation. Wow. And, you know, the path kept kind of coming up into my face about the paranormal. And that I told people that, you know, I couldn't help my family because I was so young. But now, being older, I could actually help other families. And, you know, like I said, it kept slapping me in the face. I went into the medical field. Um, then I went into law enforcement. Things like that. And then I realized, you know what? This is the path I'm supposed to be, you know, following. Right. And it just kind of took off from there. Wow, so I mean, basic. <laughs> so like, like for I know for Nate and I, um, when we when we got started in just actual paranormal investigating, um, it was it was just mm -hmm. a curiosity, and it started out with just a couple recorders and you know a night vision camera, and uh, you yeah. know as time goes by, you buy more things, but as far as like being a demonologist, like what would you tell mm -hmm. anybody that just said you know hey you know I want to go hunt demons or whatever, what what would you suggest to them? 
Well, you know, I do have a lot of people that come to me, and they're like, Katie, how do I become a demonologist? Okay? You know, first of all, number one, being a demonologist, it is, it's not fun. Okay? No part of my work is fun. You deal with a lot of cases that involve um, medical issues, psychological issues, uh, I mean, you know, the sleeping, sleeping disorder issues. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my job is like, it's, you know, like sometimes some people say, you know, being a paranormal investigator is a hobby. My job is literally 24-7. Right, right, I imagine. With my, yeah, with my job, I don't get a day off unless somebody forces me, Katie, you need to take a day off. Um, You know, but I usually say, listen, you have to build your foundation first. Start studying everything you can get your hands on with the different types of religions out there. Because as a demonologist, you need to know um, and, and be very well-rounded in different different cultures, different religions. You know, how do those entities, you know, work in this particular, you know, um, religion? Um, what do their priests use as tools? Um, start networking with, you know, um, other different types of priests or different types of demonologists, different type of doctors. Um, is network is very important. Mm-hmm. The other thing that I really stress out there, and this is very good for paranormal investigators, you know, I say it in all my interviews, go and learn some medical terminology, even if it's the basic, because a lot of times, you know, when you're dealing with clients, not everything is a demon, Okay, because demonic cases are rare, and not everything is a spirit. So, you know, having that basic medical terminology, you will definitely be able to tell, oh, okay, you know, it's, uh, you know, the high blood pressure medicine interacting with, you know, um, over-the-counter, you know, cold medicine. Mm -hmm. And it's giving the client audio hallucinations or, um, you know, so on and so forth. You know, start studying the different entities and different cultures, things like that. You know, you want to build that foundation first before you move on. Right. You know, um, once you really build that foundation, you know, start expanding your network. You know, see if a if a demonologist close by to you, um, you know, you'll be able to go out in the field with them. You know, kind of shadow what that demonologist really deals with every day on these cases, things like that. Um, Because field training is very important. Hands-on, very important. Um, You know, but start there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, because we've actually um, had a couple people wanting to be on the team or we get emails from, like, you know, hey, I'm a demonologist. I mean, I I don't know. We wouldn't even know how to, like, check their background on that. Right. I mean, I'm sure there's no card that says, hi, I'm a demonologist. Or, right. or, or, or certification of some right. sort. <laughs> Ex- right. Now, this is the thing that, you know, definitely is, how do I put it? A lot of people think being a demonologist or having that title is cool. Yeah. Okay? It's like the in thing. It's very cool. Unfortunately, there are some individuals out in this field, okay, and it just, this covers all of different types of paranormal um, areas, all right? You know, down to paranormal investigators, to psychics, to demonologists, to exorcists. Um, a lot of people just like to use the title. They really, there are some individuals I've come across that don't have even a year of field experience under their belt. Mm-hmm. Now, any, you know, being a demonologist, yes, there is no such thing as a certification. You know, me being in law enforcement, absolutely, I have certification as a law enforcement Mm -hmm. officer. You know, things like that. As a paranormal investigator, you know, there's really no, you know, stamped paper that says you are a certified, you know, paranormal investigator. There's courses you can take that people offer, and you can get that, you know, um, certificate at the end of the course, but that does not label you as, per se, a demonologist or, you know, a paranormal investigator, and per I've, se. I've seen some of those courses, and I, I always wonder what mm-hmm. the legitimacy of them are, you know? I mean, I've seen some of them that are uh, run by priests. I can't, I can't remember that one I just saw. Metaphysical 
college. It was a, uh, it was something. Uh -huh. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I always wonder what the you know, you know what the legitimacy is. You know, is, is there a background? You know, or is it just someone trying to scam money? You know. Well, you know, first of all, there's, a lot, there's always scammers out there, no matter what type of field or what type of profession, you know, you are in. Now, the thing is, you know, if you're just learning to be, per se, uh, a paranormal investigator, okay? Right. You know, taking these, you know, basic one-on-one uh, -on -one paranormal investigating courses, absolutely, I, you know, I'm all for it. But just remember the certification or that piece of paper you get at the end is just for your satisfaction. Yeah. It's just showing you, hey, be proud of yourself. You made it, um, you, and, you know, you took this course and you learned something. Okay? Exactly. It's True. not going to get you anywhere out into the field, just like a demonologist. Now, I kind of, my path was a little different because I was in occult sciences you know, in crimes expert way before I was a demonologist. So I had that background working and knowing how these entities, you know, work. I, you know, had that background of the different types of uh, religions and how they work, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but there are people that do, you know, study the different types of religion backgrounds out there and then, you know, consider themselves a demonologist. Um, you know, like I said again, being a demonologist, you have to be very careful. You have a lot of people's lives in your hands, right. okay? Mm -hmm. You can't be going into a situation and saying, it's a demon! <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I want thousands of dollars, you know, to oh, <laughs> tell you it's a you know, de uh, a demon. Mm -hmm. You know, those, I'm sorry, I, I do not agree with, and if you're charging... Yeah, that person's um, a demon that's charging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then not help the client. Unfortunately, I get a lot of those cases where some clients have been scammed. Mm -hmm. And for me, as a demonologist, you know, and being in the field for over 21 years, you know, it doesn't put me in a good light. When I'm, you know, a demonologist, you know, I've done, I can't even tell you how many things and how many books I've written, you know, through the years to try to educate people. Um, but it does, it puts me, it puts, you know, and everyone else in the paranormal field in a bad light. Mm -hmm. So, but it does happen, and, you know, what are you going to do other than, you know, I just try to educate people what to look for. Actually, um, can, could you, um, can, because some people, and I'll be honest, I, I really don't, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen some of uh, what occultism is. Could you uh, explain mm -hmm. what occultism is? Well, basically the word occultism, okay, is, I know a lot of people get very scared when they hear that word. It basically means hidden knowledge, okay? It's like going to see your doctor, and your doctor says, you have an occult tumor. Well, what does that mean? That means... You know, that tumor is, is kind of hiding. Okay, oh, it's okay. hidden. Ah, you know? so, so it's more like information. Is, mm -hmm. Huh? So it's more like information that's hidden. It, well, it's, uh, well, kind of. You know, occultism is an umbrella term for, for many different, um, you know, types of magical practices. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So it's like, yes, it is hidden knowledge, but... Um, you know, there are many different, you know, alchemy um, is a branch of occultism. Uh, even even some people consider yoga falls under the form yeah, of occultism. I've heard that, yeah. You know, I mean, I have a whole list of, you know, what occultism and what falls under it um, on my website, uh, katieboy.net. Okay. And some of the stuff is like, you know, you wouldn't even... Like yoga, come on, right? Yeah, right. But you know, a lot of people don't understand all about yoga, and that literally falls under the word occultism. Mm -hmm. It's just a misunderstood word that I think you know we're const we're raised to believe. You know, oh my god, oh my god, you know it's evil. You know, we're raised to believe oh, witches are evil when in fact, you know, they're doing wonderful things out in the soup kitchens and never asking credit for it, you yeah. know, those type of things. So. 
Um, what, what would you say to people who think they have heard that, that occultism is an evil magic? I've heard that well, before. You know, and that's basically... Well, you know. well, sure. You have to remember, I mean, I was ro- raised a Roman Catholic. You know, I went to school and the nuns were my teachers. And if you ever said any type of word occultism, you know, you got the, the metal ruler on your knuckles. <laughs> Those, that type of thing. I think we're just... You know, I think nowadays it's, you know, there's more, um, you know, occultism knowledge out there, uh, you know, just like, you know, Wiccans and Pagans and, and Witches, you know, um, it's, there's more education now out there about it. Yeah, I, I've you noticed know, that. It, it is. It, it's yeah, it's that becoming is. more popular. Well, I shouldn't say popular. It's just coming more well, prevalent in society where we can actually be open about it, you know. Exactly. It, it, it is not an evil thing. You know, um, somebody who is an occultist, you know, is studying the different types of symbology, you know, uh, the different types of ancient writings, magical formulas, things like that. Um, you know, it's, it, it isn't evil. So, so but, some people you know, would even... Like some people would even attribute yeah. an herbalist as, or, or a homeopathic as a yeah. occultism. And, I mean, that's... Exactly. So. Exactly. <clears throat> okay, I do have a question from someone in chat here. Um, it says, okay. how, how can a demon be invited into one's life, and then how can we avoid it? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, a lot of my cases that I've dealt with, okay, which, yet again, demonic hauntings are rare, okay? Not everything is a demon. But... You know, a lot of times, how you can invite a demonic entity into your home is by playing the Ouija board unprotected, okay? And what I mean is, you know, not saying a prayer before you you play a Ouija board, um, you know, not kind of bubbling yourself up, um, you know, like with a God-like light type thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, sometimes, you know, if you are taking a lot of kind of mind-altering drugs that can open you up to, you know, a demonic attack. Sometimes, you know, magical pra- uh, practitioners that are just learning, you know, could unfortunately sometimes summon an entity and not know how to, you know, banish it, um, you know, things like that. But a lot of times, I the cases I've dealt with, a lot of They've opened some. They've opened a portal in some way, and they don't know what to do. Um, you mentioned you mentioned about saying a prayer before uh, using Ouija board. <coughs> now, um, you, mm-hmm. would you advocate using Ouija boards at all? I mean, or or do you? I mean. Well, you know, I'm not afraid to use a Ouija board, and I'll tell you why. Okay, what is making the Ouija board? You know, I don't believe it's an evil tool, Mm -hmm. okay? It's a piece of wood, okay? Or it's a piece of paper. What you're doing is you're inviting, you're charging that Ouija board by saying, hey, listen, is there anybody here who wants to come through the board? Anybody? You know, you're opening that door. Yeah, you're pretty much just saying, here's an open door, come on in. Exactly. Now... If you're playing the Ouija board, okay, and, you know, the planchette starts to, like, really drag, yes, I would say put away the put away the board, put away the planchette, um, you know, and just kind of leave it there for a while, okay, because that means something negative is trying to come through. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes when you're playing the Ouija board and the planchette starts spinning in circles really fast, that is not necessarily you know, something evil or negative coming through. That literally just means that there is a spirit change, okay? Now, this is where it gets, you know, kind of not so good. If you're playing the Ouija board and, you know, a spirit comes through and says, hey, I'm your mother, um, you know, just for an example, I'm your mother and I really miss you, you know, I would love to see you again. And then you're thinking, or you're saying out loud, oh, wow, Mom, you know, I really do miss you, too, and I'd love to see you. You just opened that door for that demonic entity to come through. Oh, so they can okay? they can disguise themselves as, lo- as loved ones. Oh, absolutely. Mm. But that's 
just kind of one of those little red flags. So when you do play the Ouija board, make sure, you know, you really think about the question and how you, you know, word it. That's difficult because okay. I think most people that that end up partaking in Ouija bars are looking for loved ones, and that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Uh, got another. Oh, I'm so, go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I just got another question for you. Let's go ahead. Okay. Sure. Well, um, it's are there different classifications of level or levels of demons? Well, you know, being in the field for so long, okay, and this is just my opinion, okay. Every demonologist, every exorcist, you know, they, they have their own um, categorized, you know, with the demonic entities, things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't believe in the hierarchies. I don't believe really per se in, um, you know, levels. Most of the cases I've worked on, you know, they were kind of the lower, um, you know, negative entity forms. Okay? Mm-hmm. Like per se, you know, Satan is not going to come and hang out at your house. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Some of the differences of that, they're, they're very, very slim. He's a busy guy. Now, yeah. <laughs> he, he's like hanging at the beach, man. That's what I tell everybody. <laughs> you know? He doesn't have time for us little, you know, minions. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right? <laughs> you, have to re- you have to remember, you know, negative attracts negative. If you... You know, with all the media out there now, all the TV shows, all the movies, things like that, you know, demons are like the end thing. So everybody and, you know, a lot of the clients are going to go right to the extremes first. Right. You know, the lights are flickering. I know it's a demon because the door closed. Honey, it could be your grandmother trying to get your attention. Yeah. You know, you have to be very, very careful. And, you know, make sure you cross all your keys because you never go into a case, whether you're a demonologist or a paranormal investigator, and say, yes, yes, it's a demon, you know, and I just can't help you. Right. (laughs) You know, you don't want to scare that homeowner, and then what happens? If you don't know how to get rid of this entity, you know, or you don't have a psychic medium on your your team, you know, per se, it's a, a spirit, you know, you're leaving these poor clients in total fear mm-hmm. with no help. You know. Right. So, I mean, just, just, are you? I mean, even for us being paranormal investigators, like when we go into a house, mm-hmm. uh, do you think we're? I, I'm, I'm assuming you probably think that we're opening everything up to being, I don't want to say possessed, but yeah, I'll throw that out there, possessed. You know, how is the likelihood of that happening fairly good? Do you think? Listen, how oh, listen? Okay, demonic hauntings are very rare. Mm-hmm. Okay, now you have to remember there are more dead people than there are living. Okay, mm-hmm. so you're mostly going to encounter some type of spirit or a mundane issue, high EMF reading. You know, like high EMF. Right. Um, some type of psychological issue, sleeping disorder issue. Um, you know, things like that. If you go, if you are a paranormal investigator and you go into a case and you have any doubt, any doubt that, you know what, this could be something a little more than a spirit, then you need to have the balls to call in that professional who, you know, is, who does deal in that field. Don't try to deal with this entity um, if you're not experienced. Because now you're going to put yourself in danger. You're going to put your crew in danger, and you're putting the client in danger. Right. And you don't want that. Mm-hmm. Because, hmm. I mean, I, I'm not lying. I mean, there's nine times out of ten, the you know, the claims aren't the worst that we get. But there's ever so often we're a little apprehensive, you know, just thinking, well, geez, you know, what if... Because we've got, you know, kids at home and stuff like that, so we don't want to... Sure. Everybody says, well, you're going to bring something home. Right. And, I mean, through the through well, the years, we don't really fear as much, but then again, we don't want to let our guard down either. Yeah, I think lately we've been letting our guard down to the point where, like, we don't... We, we have no fear because right. we haven't encountered anything. Mm-hmm. It's probably our, to our well, own demise. <laughs> this is the thing. You can, you know... I have those brass balls, okay, <laughs> for the golden balls, right? <laughs> right. But, okay, you know, you could go to the grocery store and have a spirit attachment. Right. Okay, so 
if you're not doing anything prior or, you know, right when you get to a client's house, you really should be. You know, mm-hmm. say a prayer or, you know, do a bubbling up technique where you kind of envision like a God or whatever your faith is, you know, and envision a light above your head surrounding your body and kind of, you know, picture all that negative, you know, crap running towards you and bouncing off that bubble. Right. Okay? That is you're not going to go home with any type of an attachment if you do these, you know, say a prayer or, you know, sage yourself before and after an investigation, you know, things like that, because you don't want to bring something home. No, definitely not. Exactly. Exactly. Tori already thinks we have enough no. kids in the house. We don't need demons here, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably wouldn't bring a demon home. Most likely you would have a spirit attachment. Yeah. Okay? It could be, you know, a lot of times, like I said, you could be in the grocery store, and there could be a spirit kind of walking around and being like, wow, you remind me of my son. And think, you know, you're all cute and, you know, and all that, and attach themselves to you. Mm -hmm. And then you come up, you know, and now what? Now you have a spirit in your house. You know? Right. Yeah, just make sure you use some type of, of protection technique. You know, it could be whatever your religious faith, faith is, say a prayer, you know, before um, in our investigation, or, you know, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Right. Well, okay. like, because we have, yeah. um, we just, I don't know if you heard me talking about it uh, prior, but we, we got a call a couple weeks ago about a lady mm-hmm. who has had supposedly a demon or something mm-hmm. following her for 30 years. And now she's gotten to the point where she's she wants contact, uh, and, and she's not the one that called me either. It was one of her friends, but um, okay. it's been yeah, that's typical. Yeah, right. And, and we're weary of that too because that's someone asking for help for another person who hasn't asked for help yet. Well, she, I mean, right. she, I mean, her her in defense to that, you know, she really feels like she's crazy because mm-hmm. it's it's the claims are so out there that she doesn't think anybody's going to believe her, and right. um, her friend. And that, her, her, and her friend took it upon herself to ask her for help because she's seeing a difference now in this lady um, from her facial expressions to the way she talks to people especially when talking about stuff going on that it's just totally it's she's just a different person so she called us up and I told her you know we don't really we try to document happenings in the house Um, when there's a demon involved we don't feel that we're you know capable or qualified to go and, and rid the house of the demon. So, um, right. I, I was just trying to get your thought on, like, uh, 30 years, I mean, is, have you heard of something like that before? Of just being followed for 30 yeah. years of, you know, bad things happening to you and cracking, I guess? Well, you know, y- yes, okay? I'm not going to say it is a demonic entity, mm-hmm. okay? Because, like I said, I don't know the full, de- I don't know the full details of the case. And yet again, I can't stress enough, the monarch hauntings are rare. Right. Okay? Now, I don't, like I said, I don't know the full details of the case, but, you know, this woman could have had a spirit attachment, okay? And literally this, you know, spirit is putting the impressions and holding this individual down in depression. Um, you know, like, say, say it is a demonic haunting, Okay. Now, what's going to happen is, you know, the demonic entity is going to try to separate the individual from family, Mm -hmm. from friends, okay? They're going to start really feeling very depressed and isolated. They're not going to want to go outside very much, all right? Now, they're going to start getting some activity, all right? They're going to start, you know, at first, they'll see something at the corner of their eye, they'll... um, you know, I mean, spirits can do, you know, like push you, things like that. But their whole thing is they want to kind of break your will down. Right. So they'll start disturbing your sleep. You'll have a couple of hours of good sleep, and then all of a sudden you'll wake up. You know, your, your sleep, it keep constantly that whole eight hours is being disturbed. So you're not getting a full eight hours sleep. Now, also, um, you know, as you will, you're getting more tired, so your will is getting broken down even more. Then you're in that state of oppression, okay? You definitely don't know where to reach out, okay? 
um, you try to call your family or your friends or, you know, your past or things like that, and you get a lot of static on your phone. You can't get through. Um, there'll be high-pitched screaming sometimes on the phone. Um, sometimes there's, you know, especially in a true demonic haunting, there, there could be spontaneous fires. All of a sudden, there's a fire, like in a chair, and then it's wow. gone. Wow. See, I heard uh, of that. I just thought that was in the movie. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Mm -mm. No. Because that's actually no. one of the claims is that her house went on fire, and um, the firefighters found nothing that that started it. Basically, it was combustion. Well, wow. Yeah, it would be like small little fires around the house. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not like all of a sudden, it, well, your house could burn down. Mm -hmm. Um you know, but I've never experienced that particular, you know, case where, uh, you know, a case where the fire, the whole house went down. But um, large objects will be teleported to different rooms versus, you know, because a lot of people get negative spirits confused with demonic entities, okay? Now, with the negative spirits, yes, they can push over a large object or a small object or a table, a chair. Demonic entities will literally teleport that object, that large object, to different areas of the room, or the house, or the basement, or the attic, or, you know, outside. Um, you know, you'll get scratches, uh, you know, that'll last an hour to four hours and then completely disappear. Where, it, with a negative spirit, your scratches will remain for, you know, several days and then heal. Hmm. Okay, that's, that's how you can kind of tell a little different, you know, you know, oh, it is a, you know, it's these particular signs, so I know, okay, it could be on the track of a demonic haunting, or, you know what, um, you know, the scratches are disappearing within, like, two to three days, okay, you know, and, you know, the large objects are just being, um, you know, pushed over, the, the, ta the kitchen table is being pushed over, um, you know, it's not teleporting, you know, things like that kind of, you know, let you know what is and what isn't. Now, you know, now back to the individual, all right, they're not sleeping. Their will is really being broken down now. And what is the whole goal anyway? Is for this entity to basically take your soul, okay? Mm -hmm. That's what the whole thing is all about, right? Wow. Now, you're almost on the verge of the stage of being possessed. This entity is going to jump in your body and jump out, and jump in your body, and jump out, because it needs your body to still be alive, you know, until it completely breaks that will, and you're completely broken, and then they can take it over, hmm. you know, yeah. but a lot of times before it is a really true uh, demonic possession, you know, the family member, or, you know, the paranormal group, or the clergy will call in a professional. Um, before it even hits to that state. Um, if if we were to when we when we call these people back, uh, is there like like a couple three or four or five steps uh, we should take uh, like look into at question, find out about um, when we call them? Oh, honey, I have a seven page. I, I did. I did say that. I, I, I saw that online. Mm -hmm. That's why I was like, wow. I mean, th we we should should we like take what you have there and maybe try to you know, field research that and then kind of call in an expert such as yourself, actually. Right. Because <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking at this point we'll probably uh, help ask you everything we need to know. Yeah. You know, if you have questions, absolutely get a hold of me. I have no, you know, myself, and I work with a psychic medium um, for over, t over 11 years now, and, you know, we've helped so many paranormal groups out there that are like, Listen, I'm not sure. I do have a question about this case. What do you think? You know, and absolutely, you know, I will definitely help you out. Oh, we and appreciate be like, hey, that. Listen, I think you. Oh yeah, I think you need to, you know, ask the client this, or you know, when you did an investigation, did tell me what you, you know, what did you see, what did you feel when you first walked in, you know, blah 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 blah, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being a demonologist. It is a little different for me because, number one, I got a very, you know, I have like a seven-page, uh, you know, questionnaire right off the top. I think that I saw way, that. You know, it, that's right on your website, right? Katieboyd.net? Um, the, 
the questionnaire that I that I use is not on my nope. website, <clears throat> but I can send it to you. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Now that's just for your basic to weed out if the client is serious, if the issue is really real, you know, because you do have to be very skeptical too mm -hmm. right. in this day and age. All right. Mm -hmm. So that kind of just having that basic, uh, you know, uh, questionnaire will weed out who's serious and who's not. All right. Now for me, you know, after that questionnaire and talking to the client, um, you know, and then you sit down with the client, there's a lot of things as a demonologist, you know, I'm looking around. What type of movies? What type of books are they reading? Um, you know, you, you, I'm constantly testing that client. Because you, you, I'm, it's sad that you have to. <clears throat> now, as a demonologist, there's certain paperwork that I have, <clears throat> you know, to see their medical medical records, to, you know, talk to their family members, to talk to their counselors or their psychiatrists, things like that. Because you have to remember I deal with a lot of psychological issues with clients. Mm -hmm. I deal with a lot of medical issues with clients. And you want to make sure that everybody, you know, everything is out there on the table. Mm -hmm. Right. No, you have to. And the biggest thing is, you know, there are those cases where it comes down to it's not paranormal, or even if it is paranormal. Make sure when the case is all said and done that you are getting the clients the aftercare. Because I do know a lot of groups out there, and I love all these groups out there, but there are these groups that just kind of leave the client high and dry, mm -hmm. and yep. that, that's not good. We've run into that. Yeah, and it, it does happen, you know, but, you know, look, for me, you know, I ha I reach out and I make sure, okay, listen, if it's a sleeping disorder issue, I'm going to get that client, you know, that proper help in that area, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call around, you know, even if they're out of state or something like that, you know, I'm going to call around in their area and see who specializes in sleeping disorders that they could they come and you know see see this client things like that make sure you really network with these different people in in the different fields medical fields you know all those different types of things you know because it's very important if the client is number one yes we are getting something from the client we're getting that data um, you know in that research but you know what happens at the end of the day you're walking out that door but, you know, what are you doing to fix that negative spirit? Do you have a psychic medium that comes in after and helps that spirit cross over? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Make, yeah, make sure you have all your bases very, very covered because you, you can't just walk away from the client and leave them high and dry like that. Right. Uh, we do have one last question for you here. Um, oh, sure. Oh, sorry, I got to put it back on the chat. Um... Are demons, uh, we had one from Tori, are demons religion specific? No. 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 Um, you know, let's, let's hypothetically say an incubus or a succubus, okay? You know, not always is the words of, you know, per, let's just hypothetically say the words of the Bible, okay, <clears throat> isn't going to work on some of these entities. And you ask why? These entities are older than you and I, okay? They've been, this, this negative and this evil energy has been out there so longer than all of us put together. So, you know, not always the words of the Bible are going to work, you know? So they're not really, I can't really say, you know, this is a religious-based, you know, entity, you know, because a succubus, isn't really a Catholic, a succubus and incubus, isn't really a Catholic-based entity. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, the mm -hmm. I've, I've heard succubus before. Where, where is it from again? An incubus and succubus is another type of entity. They don't have to be invited into an, into your home. So they just... They come into uh, your home. Huh? So they're just a general type of... Uh, well, energy. you know, there's, there's a lot of different theories. Okay, there are some theories where people believe that, you know, incubus and succubus come from fallen angels. Some believe, you know, um, you know, that they come from, 
um, you know, Lilith, the first, um, you know, Eve. Okay? Some, some people believe that. But in Incubus and the Succubus, you know, they don't really come and try to steal your, you know, your will, your soul away. What they do is they literally come and they feed off your energy. And they sexually assault you night after night after night. Jeez. Things like that. So, and not always the word, you know, different, you know, not always the words, say, of the Jewish faith are going to work on, you know, say, an incubus or a succubus or, you know, Satan himself. Um, Kate, I also wanted to touch on the fact that uh, you wrote in several books, actually. I have. <laughs> I mean, I was only able to uh, grab three pictures uh, of, of the three books. Uh, De Devils and Demonology in the 21st Century, uh, yeah. Haunted Closets, and Witches and Witchcraft in the 21st Century. Are these all fairly new books? Are, are, are these been out for a while? Um, Devils and Demonology has been out for, oh boy, probably over a year or so, or then some now. Okay. Um, Haunted Closets just came out a couple of months ago. Oh, okay. Everything you've ever, ever wanted to know about the Boogeyman. You know, the Boogeyman <laughs> in different cultures, um, you know, all the way down to, uh -huh. you know, serial killers that were known as the Boogeyman. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the little eye in the keyhole now. I see the little eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, I really go in depth with my personal story growing up in a severe haunted house in that book. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah. I talk about portals and doorways and, you know, alien abduction. Um, oh, all kinds of things in that one. Now, The Witches and Witchcraft literally just came out. And that is actually a very positive book about the forefathers and the foremothers of witchcraft. Okay. And it's it's more or less on all, all about the activism um, that these four, four mothers and four fathers have done for, you know, pagans and Wiccans and witches of today. And um, I sat down with Laura Cabot, who, um, that she's a beautiful woman. She's like 80 years old now. And she is one of the remaining four mothers, literally, of what you would consider, you know, a uh, foremother of witchcraft today. That's cool. So there's a big interview in there with her. Um, you know, and there's some, there's some little, you know, uh, very positive little spells from, you know, uh, different, different witches uh, in the community. So it's not a scary book, and there's no scary pictures. It's actually, you know, really educational um, and a very positive book. And where can we buy those? You can buy those books. You can, you know, buy them online. Uh, Amazon.com. I see my name, Amazon. Book, uh, books .com, uh, in Barnes and Nobles. You can actually, I think stores. you can get most of the links right at your website, katieboy.net. That's K-A-T-I-E-B-O-Y-D. Am I right there? Yep. Dot net. Uh -huh. um, we also... Uh, when are you gonna? Are you gonna? Are, is there any plans in doing uh, e-readers for them? <laughs> I tried to download on my e-reader the other day. I couldn't get one. I have, have to actually wait for it. I'm waiting for it now. Um, you know that all has to do with my publisher. I just write the books. <laughs> <laughs> I just write them. Um, I want. We want to thank you so much for calling in. We appreciate it. We're almost t out of time here. Um, wow. Yeah, it goes by quick, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, we got a ton, ton more questions. I know, we're gonna so have to many. wait. <laughs> if you, if you could, yeah, maybe we'll have you on again if, if you'd like. Sure, absolutely. And, awesome. You know, guys, email me, okay, and I'll, I'll help you out on your case. No That'd be great. Sure. Actually, yeah, we'll, uh, we're gonna get together and we'll probably email you shortly. Mhm. Mm Sounds uh, awesome. And Thank you guys for having me on. Thank you for for being on. And everyone, uh, also, she has a, uh, you have a web show, a radio web show also? Uh, Ghost Quest. Uh, yeah, I have a radio show, Ghost Quest Radio on Tenacity Radio, Tenacity Radio, and Tenacity Radio Network. Awesome. Yeah, you can find us on Tenacity Radio every Monday night at 5 p.m. So there you go. You can uh, Monday night, you can watch her at 5 and come back mm -hmm. and see us at 10. Perfect. <laughs> That's a paranormal, there you go. paranormal parasites right That's there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, everybody, that's Katie Boyd. Thanks um, again, Katie. Demonologist. Thanks a lot, Katie. Oh, thank you, guys. Have a good night.
Uh, you too. Oh, that was uh, awesome. We really will thank her a lot for uh, calling in. It was uh, very informative. Cause right. We could have uh, could have used her actually. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, now we got a contact. That's yep. awesome. And Brittany is down a notch. Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> you are dead to us, Brittany. You are dead to us. Oh. Um, also, uh, no, I, I'm not dead to us. Um, also, I'd like to thank Beth. Beth, uh, she she got that interview for us. So. Yep. That was uh, props to you, man. Thanks to Randy for um, staying tuned. Yeah. So he's way past his bedtime. He's still on. I think he's still on there. <laughs> you love me. <laughs> oh, you guys. I mean, I don't know if anyone else is listening. And, and if uh, um, if Katie, you watch, or if you're watching or checking out the show afterwards, there was a moment there when you were speaking. We happened to look, check over to the the we're, chat. We were and listening in depth, and we, we were, were we were agreeing with we you, nodding our heads, nodding. And uh, there somebody was made a, a comment of about how we were nodding our heads like you could see us or something. <laughs> right. And of course, we're trying not to laugh and be rude. She didn't make it easy. <laughs> oh my god, I was uh, in tears over here. I'm dying. I almost had to walk away. I did too. I didn't know what we were doing. Great. I know. I'm going like this, trying to figure out how I'm gonna. Get. I couldn't. See, I couldn't see anything. Oh man. <laughs> but it, again, not to you know to sway or uh, bring bring out what you know she did for us. That that was awesome that she called. Yeah, me. and if anybody does have any questions that they just thought of or think of, um, email them to us or just you know post something to our Facebook. Or yep. Text us, call us, whatever. Uh, we can get them right back to her. Like I said, we'd like to have her back on the show, you know, at some point because that was that was really good stuff. It was. It was awesome. Uh, so let's reiterate some things. The Sisson House Mansion Raffle. If you want to partake in the Sisson House Mansion Raffle, you need to do a couple things. Uh, you can go below here the uh, on this page and donate. Uh, Five dollars for one ticket, ten dollars for three tickets, and that could win you a spot. You and a guess on the investigation of the Sisson House Mansion. Never been done before, so we're gonna be able to go in, and you are too. Um, that's the grand prize. And then there's second prize, uh, autographed copy of uh, Sharif Arnsworth's uh, books that actually features the Sisson House Mansion. And also, uh, third prize would be Gordy Little's uh, Clinton County Ghosts. Mm -hmm. um, and it all goes to the Potsdam Animal Shelter, so be sure to get on board with that. Um, oh. Also with um, you know Terror Mansion again, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights, um, up until Halloween. So we got this coming weekend and the following weekend. We're going to try and get up there, give everybody a little taste of what it's all about if you haven't been there before. Um, prices are definitely reasonable. They have family packs. Um, definitely check them out. You know, give support them so they can keep coming back every year because it's definitely popular and it's a really good time for everybody. So um, definitely a family thing. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, Brad Roussel. Yep. Talk about his documentary Between Two Worlds. It is featuring us. Uh, talks about everything paranormal in the Franklin County. Talks about um, does a sit down with actually one of the families that we did from Chattagay. So uh, it's a uh, really good. It's about an hour and a half, I think, and it's just. It's just great. I mean, I'm not just saying that because we're in it, but it has something to do with it. <laughs> um, and Rick's in it, too, with his pillow. No no pillow in this one. Oh, yeah, no, no pillow. pillow. Rare footage here. You have to get it just for that. I mean, yep. it's a collector's item. Yeah, it's not attached to his knees, as you will see. <laughs> uh, so check it out, $20. If anybody wants it, let us know. Email us, or you, you can go check out his Facebook. Either way, we'll get it to you. We'll get it to you soon. Um, Got to check it out because they're flying fast. Yep. Um, I think that's about it. I uh, would like to thank Katie Boyd, obviously. KatieBoyd.net. Go check out her website. She also got a bunch of books. I'd like to thank uh, everyone from the Paranormal Expo, Merrill, uh, everyone from NEPS, uh, the NY, sorry, NCPRS, and also Scott Dow for uh, you know hooking up with us and uh, you know Perry Unity. There's a site out there. Go go at it on Facebook. Add us on Facebook. FreeGhostHunt.com. Slapstreet60.com. What else? Want to promote something? <laughs> Dude, I think we promoted everything. Yeah, we're, you know. All right, I'm Nate Lasham. I'm Donnie Darragon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Episode number 10, that's a wrap. Yeah.